What is your American dream? I'm from Chicago, my parents are from the Philippines, and my American dream is to have world peace. I think that it all starts with teaching each other how to love one another and that will set the path for a positive future. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. My American dream is peace on earth. I was born in Moscow. My American dream is I really want to get good education and I want to do my favorite things in the future. I was born in New Jersey. My American dream is to hit the mega million so I can take care of my family, my friends, and myself. I'm from Belgium. My American dream would be that between, between youth people, we have deep conversation about our faith, about how we see life, and how we can live together. Everyone has a right to the American dream. <laughs>2018, and that means only one thing on a Wednesday, April 12, 2018. Is that Wednesday or I Thursday? I did say Wednesday. I was about to say, hold on. It's Thursday. But it was Thursday. It is Thursday. It's Gotta a hard Thursday. Gotta get closer Thursday. to the weekend, as close as we can get. Still take one day away from us, Brad, please. Please don't. Please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come back to me again. All right, let's start again now. Number three. It is start again. It is Thursday, April 12th. Welcome, everybody. I'm the host with the most, the man with the plan, Brad Bernstein. And I'm here going to be answering your immigration questions once I know what day it is and once I get all set up here. And you know what's really weird? about all of this and welcome everybody and this is this is actually I'm going to give you a, a lot of intelligent smart answers to your immigration questions uh, once we get this show rolling and what's actually very interesting and weird to me is that we were literally sitting here for about 10 minutes and this is probably the earliest we've ever prepared for our show usually we're racing it at the last second <laughs> yes. and we look totally calm yet we're sitting here for 15 minutes and we start the show it's like an absolute disaster I don't know right. what day That's it is crazy. my collar's off that's crazy. What else did I get wrong? Um, uh, the the day and date. The day and the date. Yeah. Yeah. I was off by a day and date. It's all good. It's, it's all good it's though. All, we're just used to we're we're used to you know the the chaotic you know Chaos. environment. Yeah. We yeah. need the adrenaline. So. Yeah. To I make was us I remember. was too calm. My you brain, were right. My brain was. <laughs> you were resting. I was resting. My brain was obviously a rest. Brad doesn't yeah. rest. Arrest. You, you did. You Maybe came in dancing arrested. and singing. Right. And yes. That's in the yeah. best mood today. Yeah, I was in a very that's good probably, mood. That's yeah. probably why your collar popped because he was dancing. I was yeah. dancing. I was. I was over here I, before, before, before the show started, I came right up to 
Belgium, Kim, and jo and Jonathan Yo Yo Elias, and I was like dancing around a little bit yeah. right before we got set up. Oh, and they're fun. like, "Why are you in such a good mood today?" <laughs> and I said, "Why not? It's Thursday, right?" And now, of course, I announced the show as being Wednesday. <laughs> All right. So, uh, hello, Willie Williams, Lisa Bling Rose, Dion Dean, Dancy, Doris Bernard, Deborah Gail McCrone, uh, Nezzy wants more. Hello, Nezzy. Christy Gonzalez. Uh, what do you want more of? Paulette Williams of saying Brad. hello to Paulette. More of Brad, more, maybe more Belgium Kim. Maybe oh. more Jonathan Yo Yo Elias. Cordella Willery, That's hello, it. Dawn Harriet. And these are all, these are all, by the way, Brad Squad people. They watch day after day. If you want a hello from me, you just gotta you gotta give a couple of shout-outs in the comment section. And once we get to know you, you're gonna get a hello from me too. There you go. Uh, Malvia Clark. Ian Felix. Do we know Ian? We don't know Ian. I and mean. he's saying, hi, Thunder. Who's Thunder? Oh, uh. Th Thunder Keller Rob. Th Thunder Keller Rob. That yeah. we know. We know. Oh, we know her. We yeah. know her. <laughs> All right. And on Bradshaw Live, which is a smaller audience than on the law offices of Spar Bernstein, it but is. a vocal. Man. Extraordinarily Very vocal so. audience on Small Bradshaw but Live. Mighty. <laughs> yes. Tamika Nelson, Kirk Brown, Consali, always watching on both. Uh, uh, who else? Yvonne Steele. I haven't seen her in a while. Jeff Bosey. I see the groundhog is mad at Jeff Bosey today. <laughs> Jella <laughs> Shauna. Uh, Monica Stone. Uh, who else? Uh, Marsha Whitaker. Patrona Collins. Tanette So Bless Robinson. Who else we got here? Uh, uh, Barbara Lord. David Gabriel. David Gabriel, You're thank you very much. Squad. You jo join me. Come on. You we got, uh, Why am I the only one shouting out? Baby Melissa, Melissa here. Baby Mel, Mel Bryan. Yeah. Marsha Whitaker. Hello, hello, hello. You said Velma Gale, right? I did not say you, Velma Gale. Uh, well, then I'm going to say Velma That's Gale. That's right. Right. Trika Trika Taylor. Trika Taylor. AKA. AKA. <laughs> AKA. She changes her name all the time. <laughs> Stacy and Hodge and everybody else in the Brad Squad. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, welcome, Belgium Kim. Welcome, Jonathan Yo Yo Elliot. Thank, Thank you, sir. Hello hello, 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 hello. How was your days today on this Thursday, April 12th? I'll get the day right. <laughs> very busy. Very, very busy. Yes. Yeah. yes. It, was yes. A, it was a really good day. We, I think that we got some stuff in today. We got, we got the Brad. Oh, show yeah. Cups. Brad Show mugs. Yes. Can we get a close now, up on the mug? Let's get a close up yeah, here. We can get a close up. Can we get a close up and show it? Now, I want to get the close-up, but I want to Ooh. tell you, tell everybody here, come, come a little closer, get a little closer. <laughs> okay, now, do you want to know what David Moreno said? He saw the cup. He said, oh. Brad, it looks like they put your head on, uh... On the Rock's body, right? Dwayne the no, Rock, Dwayne the Rock's body, right? They're like, I, he, Moreno said, Brad, I don't think you have that body. I think he's hating. I, that's exactly what you I think said. So? I think David Moreno is being a hater. I think he's he's a gory criminal defense attorney, but he hates on well, our mugs. Well, well, he's going to be he's going to be coming in at six thirty to talk yes. about one of his cases. So I'm going to ask him. Maybe maybe Brad Squad has some questions about about that as well about yeah. mugs. Yes. Not mug shots. Oh, they oh. have they have mug questions. They have right. mug questions. The primary one being, when am I getting mine? Yeah. <laughs> but, but by uh, the hard. way, do I have Rocky Body? Do we have a picture of what I look like in high school? You know, because in high school, in high school, people said not my body, obviously, but they <laughs> said my face from my neck up. I looked yeah. a little like Sylvester Stallone. I think and I, I could showed, see it. And I, I see showed. It. No, you don't see it here. No, but, but like, I but could like see with one. a full yeah. head of hair. I could understand and how we could get there. Face. Do we have a picture? Do we have that picture? I showed it to I Carrie, and Carrie took it, and she said, "I'm going to use it one day." <laughs> and I said, "When are you going to be using this picture?" <laughs> And right. she goes, I'll surprise you. I was Whoa. <laughs> that was yesterday. But I, apparently they're not ready to use it today. And the only reason I'm, only reason I'm saying it is because we just even had that conversation yesterday. Right. And now David Moreno says, Brad, this doesn't look like you in this mug. It looks like Dwayne The Rock That's Johnson. That's a hater move. That a hater move? Yeah. And I, so I said to him, thank you very much. And you want to know why I said thank you very much? 
Because Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he's a pretty talented, wealthy, handsome, right. well-built man. Absolutely. I'm happy. Right. I am happy to, to be, be compared, compared to that. I, yes. It's not an insult. At all. Right. I mean, I said, I said, you know what? It, it would have been an insult if you said, boy, Brad, you look like, you know, it looks like Danny DeVito on this ah. bond. <laughs> then that would be a different yeah. different story, that, yeah. right? That wouldn't yeah. be. It wouldn't be as, but as nice. No. But Dwayne The Rock, I, I like that compliment. I'll take that, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, let me tell you what's in the news. But Oh, but before we tell you what's in the news... Before we tell you what's in the news, let's see if they got this ready or not. Ooh. All right, let's see. We got surprises today. Oh, Ooh. my goodness. I you do, are... Do we have any surprises? Vi visual they... surprises today, Joe? Do visual surprises. Joe? I... They're visual surprises. We have no visual surprises today. Oh, what was that? I was <laughs> there are no, what do you mean what was that? We have, I was told visual surprise today. And they tricked you. Visual and they tricked surprise. me. That's foul. They tricked me I on the visual surprise. I think someone is out there for you. Somebody's just yeah, like, you Yeah, know Joe what I mean? just whispered in my ear. Sorry, I forgot to tell you. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> this show's going way <laughs> off the tracks. Yeah. Man, <laughs> we are the little engine that could today. Yeah, let me tell you. We ya. certainly are. <laughs> All right, so everybody, we're going to go back to the old visual surprise, which is you take out your thumb, you take out your pinky, oh. and you please share this with your friends and family. And believe it or not, the show is going to go, Is I'm telling you, the quality of the show from the moment you start sharing is going to yes. start going up. Absolutely. The you're going to get real good quality now moving forward. All right? We're going to be shooting the breeze with what's going on in the news. Mm -hmm. We are going to be answering your immigration questions. We are uh, going to have David Moreno come in live on our show at 6.30 to talk about, about one of his criminal cases. Get him live. And you can also call 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-529-5465. If you call now, we will be answering your immigration questions. Now's the time to get your immigration questions asked and answered at 1-800-529-5465. While we wait for the lines to heat up, Belgium, Kim, and Jonathan. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Trump administration, I just want to give you, an, I know, because I'm, I'm, you know, watching the news all day. Right. 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 So I just wanted to give you an update in case you were busy working. I was. That's, okay. That's true. That so I, but I'm watching the news all day. So I just wanted to give you a quick update of what's going on. Mm -hmm. The Trump administration mm -hmm. has suspended their immigrant legal advice program. So you used to be able to call and get some advice if you're in deportation, like a little advice, and they would give you a telephone number to call, no more. Wow. No more. The, um, this Boy. program was actually created by President George W. Bush. That's George Jr. Mm -hmm. W, mm -hmm. as w. we like to w. call w. Mm -hmm. And unlike in the, because unlike in the criminal system, I don't know if you know this, Jonathan, hmm. but unlike in the criminal justice system, immigrants are allowed to have attorneys in deportation proceedings, but they do not have to be appointed by the government. The government doesn't is, doesn't have to pay for any of this. Mm. So because the government doesn't have to pay for any so of that this, means they have they're to. not entitled to free legal help uh, versus like in a criminal case, you are, in, you are entitled uh, to free legal help, legal aid. So there is no entitlement to legal aid. So in, re, in wow. instead, they a paltry $18 million $18 million is what this program, and it helped lots and lots of people, kind of like what we do, but I actually give really, I mean, I, don't, I can't tell you the quality of advice, but right. at least it was better than no advice. Yeah, absolutely. Okay? Kind of like, you know, you call in, hey, I got a question. Okay? That, right. No more. Hmm. But we're taking up the slack. I was just about to say. We are taking up the slack, yeah. and you can so call us every it. day. Okay? Nobody's paying me $18 million to do this. So That's right. for sure. I mean, you could do it for a third of the price. I would, I'm doing, you know what? Still. You know what? H how about we do it for free? Because nobody's wow. paying me nothing to do this. So let's That's do it for free. It's impressive. There All right, go. so uh, Donald Trump, another strike against immigrants by Donald Trump. Talking about Donald Trump and strikes, mm -hmm. <laughs> apparently the publisher of the National Enquirer, besides paying Karen McDougal $150,000 mm -hmm. not to tell her story, Wow. Also paid Donald Trump's doorman at Trump Tower $30,000 to bury to bury a story that he is the father of his housekeeper's child. Wait, what? That Donald Trump is the father? Donald Trump, yes. 
The New Yorker and the Associated Press published stories saying oh. that the National Enquirer paid $30,000 in 2015 to doorman, he's the doorman at Trump Tower, Okay. Dino Sajudin, that's Trump, uh -huh. the alleged father, also our alleged so president. this is the doorman? So this is that, Dino. That's Dino the doorman. Huh. He's a former doorman at Trump, and uh, he was saying it's a rumor. Nobody knows whether it's a fact or not, mm -hmm. but it is certainly a rumor, and he said he was going to attest, Dino was going to attest, that the rumor was true that Trump fathered a child out of wedlock with the woman who came and cleaned his apartment at That's Trump just, Tower. That is crazy. juicy. Yes. Now, Ronan Farrow... Who is Woody Allen's son? Son. Who, okay. Who, there he is. Yeah. He claimed Woody Allen molested him. That's right. Okay. Wait. He is the author of this story. This is how crazy it is. Wait. Oh. He claimed. He that claimed Woody Allen, you know, the famous movie yeah. director, molested him as a child. And that's his son. And that's his son. They don't talk anymore. Blood like son. B yeah. A stepson, I think. Uh, step oh yeah, because he's Mia Farrow. He was Mia Farrow's son. It was okay. a stepson. Wow. It was his stepson. But Ronan Farrow, who's Mia Farrow's son, was claiming Woody Allen was molesting everybody in that household. Damn. Right? And 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 he is the he's the author of this story about Donald out. Trump. He also, by the way, started the Me Too movement. Oh, he wow. was the one who broke the story with Harvey Weinstein. Wow. So now he broke the story with Harvey Weinstein. So that means and he's now he's incredible. breaking the story now. Okay, he's pretty credible because Harvey right. Weinstein turned out to be true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right. He accused Woody Allen of sexually molesting his sister, not him. His sister. Uh, okay. That was his first accusation. Okay. Nothing ever happened to Woody. Uh, okay. Okay, he just, right. Woody got dragged through the mud, but nothing ever happened to him. Okay. He kept continuing to make movies. Okay, Absolutely. everybody worked with him. Right. Okay, then. Unlike Bill Cosby. Unlike Bill Cosby. Right. right. Then, Ronan years later wrote an article uh, with a lot of details about Harvey Weinstein. Mm -hmm. They believed him on Harvey Weinstein, brought down the Weinstein company, and started the Me right. Too movement. This all started with this kid. Wow. Okay, now, today, he published an article saying that the National Enquirer paid the doorman at Trump Tower wow. $30,000 not to say anything that Trump had a kid with the housekeeper. Why, but why wouldn't the National Enquirer want the Be doorman to say that? Because the National Enquirer, the, the, the owner of the National Enquirer, who's his best friend? Yeah. Donald Trump. Yeah, really? they've been They're best story. friends. Yeah. They're best Look friends. There's his best friend. Oh, wow. Chubby. So that's his best friend. Only 30,000? Only 30,000. that's the yeah. sad part about it. Yeah. Because that dude could have And now I want you to more. know something. I think I Before this came out, and Jill will attest to this, and she's not here to attest to this, because she's in the other room producing uh -huh. the show. But before this came out two days ago, I said, I said to Jill, I said, what if Stormy Daniels kid is Donald Trump's and that's what they're trying to hide? I said, I bet you that's what it is. Wee. And then I had Kim look up how old Stormy Daniels kid is. And she had the kid like five years after the relationship. <laughs> the math did not work. So I go, oh, the math didn't work out. I go, damn, I thought I was on to something. And then like 48 cool. hours later, and then like 48 hours later, this happens. This happens. There you that. go. Okay, now separately, Oof. Michael Cohen. Yeah, the, the attorney. He's the attorney, paid Stormy Daniels $130,000, not to say anything about Trump yes. having sex with her. Yes. Also separately, the National Enquirer paid Karen McDougal $150,000 to tell her story and never wrote it. Right. Right. Well, buried it. They buried the story. This is crazy. crazy. This, is a, this is an actual, like, movie. It, it is. I'm going to tell you something. I was just saying to Jill, I said, when they make, you know, the life and time of Donald Trump, mm -hmm. it's going to be like Star Wars. It's going to be like in six parts. Okay? <laughs> right. You know? Because, I mean, it just goes <laughs> on. Every every That's week real. is like a whole movie. Right. You can do just the sex allegations. You I mean, every week. Just the fraud. Just right. the... <laughs> but you want to know how the movie ends. How? 
Keep Celebrity keep rap sheet. Oh, uh, he's uh, in jail. Uh, That's how it's going to end. Uh, but you guys said that he's not going to end up spending time, right? Yeah, probably not. I Pence, want him Pence to. Will, I, and that's Pence why I feel like this too. was all a plan. Pence. Him coming into office, getting Pence into office, and then pardoning You'd him. You think Pence is behind all of this? Yes. Wow. And, I think, and, and, and Donald Trump knew he was going to end up mm. getting caught with all of this stuff that's well, happening. Well, there is so. no question, okay, that, that at this point in time, at least what Michael Cohen did, I don't know how he's going to get out of it. There's a crime somewhere because right. he set up a company... Okay. Right. We, this has nothing to do with the Russian. This has nothing to do with the Russian uh, investigation, which maybe is a crime also. Okay. But he set up a company, Michael Cohen, perhaps at the behest of the president, to put one hundred thirty thousand dollars into this company and pay Stormy Daniels to keep quiet right before the election. Now, this company has to pay a tax return. How did this company make this one hundred thirty thousand dollars? If this company lawfully made $130,000 and they got to file a tax return, they never filed a tax return, that's tax fraud. Mm. Quite. If this company was a shell company, never earned a penny, and Michael Cohen put $130,000 into this company for hush money to pay off Stormy Daniels, it's an illegal campaign contribution. Crime. I don't know how you get out of it. You don't. So... Someone's going down. Except for, like you said, Pence pardoning him. Someone is going down. All right. So, by the way, <sighs> I just read a New Jersey couple, first time ever, mm -hmm. Sue Johnson and Johnson, was awarded $117 million. Mm. $117 million by Johnson and Johnson Why? for damages from using baby powder, talcum powder. Really? Yes. The Middlesex County, New Jersey jury ordered the company to pay $80 million in punitive damages Wednesday. Uh, also $30 million in compensatory damages and $7 million to the wife. Wow. What? This guy used Johnson & Johnson's baby powder for 30 years and claimed that inhaling the powder caused his mesothelioma. Oh, my God. Yeah, now, we've had mesothelioma Wow. You know, things on our show before. Right. Brittany, yeah. Brittany's, you know, started. Brittany right. didn't handle this case. But now he's claiming that Johnson & Johnson knew there was asbestos in the baby powder wow. and never told. Oh, wow. And, um, and it's been, and now Johnson & Johnson says, wow. I have to put this disclaimer in. Johnson & Johnson says, Johnson's baby powder has been used for more than 120 years and it does not contain asbestos. And it does not cause mesothelioma. And we are going to continue to defend the safety of Johnson's baby powder and immediately begin our appeal. And we believe that once all the evidence is reviewed, the decision will be reversed. That's their statement. So they could still reverse They the, claim there the is no asbestos-causing materials Isn't it, in Johnson's it baby take, powder. Like, wouldn't it be easy to just take a bottle of the baby powder and find out if there well, is? Well, the like, lawyers accused the company of holding back the information from its customers about the health risks of asbestos since the 1960s. And apparently what happens is that the talc that's used in the Johnson's baby powder is mined near wherever, wherever the mine is that they're getting the talc from. Mm -hmm. near an area that also contains asbestos and it got cross-contaminated. Mm. And Johnson & Johnson is not telling anybody. Wow. I don't, we're not, nobody is saying that Johnson & Johnson purposely put right. asbestos in their talc. Mm -hmm. What they're saying is they were aware that, that it, it, it could it be in there. It was cross-contaminated mm. and they never told anybody. See, that's trifling. Wow. And they deserve. They deserve. They deserve. Money. Could there be criminal? Are there ever criminal charges brought there against the people there that have buried be. that? Should, maybe there should be. But you know, apparently they feel they've done nothing wrong, so they're appealing. You know, the the difference in what you have to prove for a criminal case and what you have to prove in a civil case, and the, the best the best example of that ever is O.J. Simpson. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in a criminal case, you got to be able to prove that it is beyond a reasonable doubt they've done something wrong. That's, a crim that's what you got to prove for criminal. It's like way up here. Yeah. Okay? In a civil, you just have to say more probable than not. So 51% of the evidence says they're guilty. 49% says they're not guilty. Guess what? You're liable. Guilty. Got right. it. You're not guilty, but liable. Right, right. So, so, so the, the, what you have to prove is something less. And, and the best example of that was O.J. Simpson, mm -hmm. where in a criminal case, 
there, Johnny Cochran put some doubt in the jury's mind. Maybe right. he didn't do it. Right. Okay? But in the civil case, they were able to prove, well, you know what? It's more probable than not that he did it. We don't know beyond a reasonable doubt, but it's certainly more probable than not. And that's why O.J. was on the hook for like the 30 or $40 million, but he was never found guilty. So my, my question is, from all of the people that, the millions of people that have used Johnson & Johnson, right. how do we get up in this case then? Is it only because he actually he, he got, got meso, cancer? He got, he got mesothelioma. But like if and they, so, so, so when you get this disease, mm -hmm. you can only get it from breathing in asbestos. You don't, it's not a cancer you get. It's not like right. skin cancer. It's not uh, lung cancer. It's not, it's, it, it's, it's only you get it from breathing in asbestos. So if this man said, I used baby powder for 30 years, I've never been in touch or in contact, I assume he said I've never been in touch or in contact with any other asbestos related products in the 30 years that I've been alive, so therefore, it can only come from this Johnson baby powder. I never touched anything else. How do you even possibly, like? He, he would find have to prove out. it. How do you? How do you even like say, hey, it came from this baby powder? Like out of nowhere? Did, because that's the only thing that he ever came. In, I assume it's the only thing he ever came in contact with that that had asbestos. Wow. Oh, wow. Jeff, yeah. Jeff, in our comments, brought up a really good point and said they've been putting this stuff on me since I was a kid. Now I use it to put in my shoes and dry my feet. I use this all the time. And I think that's a great point. Like people trust their babies with baby powder right. and I think that's kind of terrifying. I think a lot of people are probably yeah, thinking that yeah. way. I, I, I think people should start using cornstarch. I think the <laughs> shoes. Cornstarch? Corn Is starch. that a really? real thing for you real. can do it's that? A real, it's a real, it's a real thing for real. Use cornstarch, okay? But it because doesn't because smell because, like You know, and then I remember though, even right? like when I went to like, you know, day camp and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, the kids would like throw powder in your face mm -hmm. and right. maybe I breathed it when I was a kid, I don't know. That's the thing, is so yeah. many people come, it's such a commonly used thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, here's my Rocky picture now. Let's see. This is me in high school. Let's see. I'm told we have it now. Oh, man. Let's see. I want to see. Oh, we don't have it now. Oh, what? It's coming. There I am. <gasps> Whoa! Wow. And you want to know where that picture is? You want to know where that picture what? came from? That is me in a mock trial. I was on the mock trial team in high school. You really, you look like yeah, go a... Back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, one that more time. That's one crazy. more time. <laughs> one That's more time. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, look at that head of hair. You look know at who that you look head like? of hair. You look like a cross between yeah. Sylvester Stallone and Prince. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hair. It's, it's the, the hair. hair. It's <laughs> the hair. <laughs> I, I want you to know in high yeah, school. It's sad eyes. In high school. In high school. All right, you can take it down. Right. In high school. <laughs> In, uh, okay, good. You can take that. <laughs> uh, in, in high school, I, if you asked me, would I have ever thought that I would, you know, like not have anything? Uh -huh. right. You would have never. never years. Yeah, because look at all that yeah, head of hair. Look at that head of hair, right? Jelly Bee Shauna says you look like Michael Jackson. I look like Michael Jackson. <laughs> Damn. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine if I had like a glove on? It would have been a wrap. <laughs> Wow, Do you was, have a sparkly glove fun. on hand yeah. like that, Brad? Oh my God, there's so much news in the news today. There's always <laughs> oh so much God. news. Well, Los Angeles is painting the streets white to combat their heat. Yes. Wait, what? It's a great idea. This is wow. crazy. I saw this. Mm -hmm. Crazy. And that combats the heat? That actually does? It does. Apparently it does. Because it reduces the temperature yeah. of the city. Makes sense. Wow. Right. right. We, we need paint it the streets in LA. white and it's much cooler. They call it heat islands. Wow, that looks yeah. kind of fun, too. All right. Um, by the way, we're going to answer your immigration questions now. A lot of people are on hold. 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-5... I could have spent, by the way, another 45 minutes doing Absolutely. news. Absolutely. Yeah. But we got to get to immigration. 1-800-529-5465. That's the number to call. Please share this with your friends and family. Let them know share that we now. will be answering your immigration questions. one 800 Five two nine five four six five May in Tucson, Arizona. May. Hello. Hi, May. Yes, uh, I'm from Philippines, mm -hmm. and I'm here uh, in Arizona for only six months. Okay. And I have um, my domestic visa from UAE. When my employer, my American employer, worked with, I worked with them in UAE for five years. So right. I just got my 10-year visa right. from UAE. Right. And then uh, I was here now for six months mm -hmm. because they invited me to come over here. So right. I worked with them 
I work with them also. Uh, my uh, my question is uh, how how do I process my uh, domestic visa, which is B one, to transfer to working visa with my same employer from UAE? Well, there there, already, there is no there is no work visa for domestic workers. So oh. people, what, so let me explain to people because they may be confused. How do you get to even come over here? If you are if you are working for an American citizen abroad as a domestic worker and the American yes. citizen says I'm coming to America for a few months on a temporary basis and then I plan on going back abroad and I would like to bring yes. my domestic worker my nanny or whatever with me you can do it yes. on a temporary basis which is how you got the B1 visa to come and work here now yes. if your employer uh, who got you the B-1 visa has now decided to stay in America and is not going back to the UAE, they got to sponsor yeah. you for a green card. And that's, that would be the um, process. There is no work visa. Now, sponsoring for a okay. green card may require you to leave the country for a little bit and then come back with a green card to go work for them, but that would be the process. So hold on mm -hmm. one second, May, and we can talk to you off the air and have a consultation and, and help you okay. more, okay? All right, 1-800-529-5465. Please tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend that they can call right now at 1-800-529-5465. Also, please tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to share this. So if you're watching this and you say, ah, I don't feel like sharing this, then tell your friend to share it. Tell your friend's friend to share it. Or better yet, share it on your friend's timeline and then tell him to share it also. Because sharing is absolutely caring. That's what it is. Uh, 1-800-529-5465. And finally, my last set of instructions before I answer your questions. Besides sharing, because sharing is definitely caring. And besides calling 1-800-529-5465, and that's the number to get your immigration questions answered. The last set of instructions I have is if you like this show even a smidge or that much, then what you do is you go to Brad Show Live and you like and follow our show on Facebook. And every time we come live at 5.30 in the afternoon, which is every day, Monday to Friday, you will be notified by Mark Zuckerberg that we are live. You'll never miss a show again. So please like and follow Brad Show Live if you haven't done it. Please share this with your friends and family if you haven't done it. And please call 1-800-529-5465 to get your immigration questions answered. Tamika in Brooklyn. Tamika. <laughs> Hi, Brad. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much. You're doing a wonderful job. Keep Thank it up. You. I just wish all the callers would share. So many people Thank in you. New York need the help. I know. I just need I, to know about you. There's millions of people yeah. who need the help, and, and and nobody knows about it, but eventually, hopefully, one day they will. Yeah, I gave yeah. a friend of mine your information Thank just you. now. She's going through a terrible divorce. Oh, so, gosh. You yeah. know? All right. Thank you. Yeah, my question is, Brad. Um, mm. I've been married from 2016. My husband filed for me, and um, and um, he started become abusive. And um, I I called you already, and you told me to go to the interview that me and him supposed to go to, and um, I went. But now I'm wondering how long the I-360 is gonna take. Okay, all right, good. I, I was about to say I can't believe I told you to go with him and stay in an abusive marriage. I'm glad no, you, you went alone. You, you, went, you went alone, everything. right? You went alone. The I-360 takes yeah. about 18 months. 18 months. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So right. am I just applied for the? Um, so can I apply for work authorization? You're married. You were married to a citizen, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You should. File an I-765. All right. All right. If you need, okay, if you, I, thank you. What, we're not handling it for you, but if you need help, come and see us, okay? All right. Definitely All will. Right. Thank okay. you so Hold much. On. All right. 1-800-529-5465. I got scared for a second because I thought you was going to say, and Brad, you told me to stay with him. I'm like, I would never say you to stay with anybody. What I did tell her, and I'm glad that, you know, I had a momentary like, oh my God, is this what she heard me say, is that... If you're in an abusive relationship and you have the adjustment pending and you you separate from your spouse, obviously, go on the interview alone, explain to the officer, I'm in an abusive relationship, that's why I'm here alone, and then file the I-360 or file the I-360 and then go. All right, let's go to uh, John in Atlanta. John. John. Hi, Brad. How are you? Yes, Brad. Fine, thank you. I have kind of the same question. Uh, okay. I filed my uh, green card application. I got my work permit. I filed in December. I got it in July, last July. So now my wife wants to divorce. Uh, 
she's already kicked me out of the house. And, you know, uh, it has been going on because of money issues. So what do I do? Well, this is, uh, she's not physically abusive to you and, and financial, you know, you know, if she says, hey, we got money issues and you're fighting over that, uh, you know, that in of itself is not extreme emotional abuse. Maybe the word she's using and how, how she's interacting with you could could be extreme emotional abuse. And it could be caused by a financial situation. I don't know. Uh, so, you know, you have two choices when you are filing to adjust your status before you have anything, which is what you have now. It's either you are showing up with your spouse or you're showing up alone and, and hopefully you have evidence of physical abuse. Well, not hopefully, nobody ever wants to be physically abused and nobody wants to be emotionally abused, but the only way you're going to get, so I don't, I don't, maybe I shouldn't use the word hopefully, but, but if, if you have evidence of physical abuse or you have evidence of extreme emotional abuse, you can still continue with the case, which was what this other woman uh, did before. If it's just a situation where, yeah, you yelled at each other, you fought, and that's it, but there was no extreme emotional abuse or no physical abuse, well, then that's just a marriage that broke up. And, and then at that point, now you've got to go find another way to get a green card. Okay. All right. So I'm not sure which way it is. I don't know. Uh, but if you want to have a consultation, by all means, hold on. All right. Let's go to, am I going to pronounce this right? Drabo? Drabo? Yes, sir. Is hi, bro. Hi, is it Drabo or Drabo? It's Drabo. Drabo. How are you, Drabo? Yeah, I'm good. What All about right. you, sir? Fabulous. What's going on? Good. Oh, uh, I'm married to to a girl from Ivory Coast, mm -hmm. and she applied for asylum. Right. Right now, I'm not going to school, so uh, I lost my study. I'm not an F1 student no more. Okay. And my, my my question is, uh am I able to go back home if I apply for a travel document to go back home and reentry to to USA? Why how would you be able to reenter? You've overstayed on your visa. They're not going to give you a new visa and you're married to someone who's filing for asylum. So what I would suggest you do is you include yourself on that asylum application. As long as the marriage happened before she's granted asylum, you would be entitled. If she's granted asylum, you would be as well. Okay. All right. That's. But I wouldn't. You travel back. You. I doubt they'll let you back in. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Be hold thank on. You. Hold on. All right. What? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Wow. That was not even me. It's it's not that, was, that was not saliva. You know, usually it's like saliva. You drink something and it goes down. What that was, was air. That never yeah, happened to me. That's the first time. That. Air? Air. It was like a, an air that. ball? And like an air ball. That's... An air pocket went down the wrong pipe. That How doesn't that feel? feel okay. It was not, it was not a good scary? feeling. It was a very scary, not a good <laughs> feeling at all. Uh, I'm going to have to talk to my doctor about You're it. You're like waterboarding yourself. Yeah, no, no, I'm going to have to talk to my doctor. He's going like, so, so, Brad, let me understand this correctly. You had an air pocket go down the wrong pipe? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. All right. Let me, go, let me, let me send you to the psychiatrist at the hall, right? Let me watch Grey's Anatomy. Yes. <laughs> what's going on here. <laughs> all right. So now we get to the point of social media check-in. This is when you're going to ask your immigration questions of Belgium, Kim, and Jonathan, Yo Yo, Elias, and they are going to ask your questions of me because you're too shy to call. So leave your questions right now on Facebook on Spar and Bernstein, as well as on Bradshaw Live, and we are going to be answering them now. Oh, now? Now. Ooh. Right now. Okay. Right now. Ah, all right. So I have one from Regina Ofosua. Okay, nice. Regina. Mm hmm. All right. God bless you for your good work. Thank you. First off, um, a friend is married to a U.S. citizen and just filed for her adjustment of status, but she is now filing for emotion abuse. Now uh, she went to know. She wants to know. Oof. Oof. Ooh, so she wants to know the faith fate of her children because his uh, her husband just filed I one thirty for them. If if she filed an abuse case prior to her children's twenty first birthday, mm -hmm. and the mag and the marriage happened before the eighteenth birthdays of these children, mm -hmm. they would be included on the abuse case. Gotcha. So she doesn't have to worry. Bruce is wondering. The, my father's a green card holder and will be eligible for citizenship in 2019. So it just says father, so it's a father, mm -hmm. his friend. 
His friend has two kids in Jamaica, they're 9 and 13, and he intended to file for their green cards after naturalization. The mother's in Jamaica and wants to know if the kids have to go live with the father in the U.S. or could the children obtain their green cards and continue school in Jamaica until they finish high school at age 17? Do they fall into some sort of same category as adults who will be required to have re-entry permits if they leave? Well, if the father becomes a citizen and files for the kids and they enter the United States under their 18th birthday, they're coming to go live with the father and the father was to go into family court and get legal guardianship of them, they would become automatic U.S. citizens. Then you don't have to worry about reentry permits because they would be living with their father, who's a U.S. citizen, as a green card holders in the custody and, uh, and, and legal custody and physical custody of the father. They would get U.S. passports. Once they have their U.S. passports, they can go do whatever they want for years and go wherever, wherever they feel like. All right. Nana. Nana Nai. Mm-hmm. I think I said it right. Uh, hey, Brad, uh, is there an application uh, fee for EAD and advanced parole renewal based on a pending I-485 b um, based on marriage to a U.S. citizen? Yes, you, the first work permit and advanced parole is part of the adjustment filing. The second one you have to pay for. <clears throat> Don wants to know, how long after you get married to a citizen are you actually going to be receiving your green card? Never. You have to actually file paperwork for it. Mm -hmm. So just the fact of marrying a citizen saying, wow, maybe this out of the sky one day the green card's going to come, it's never going to come. You marry a citizen, if you're in the United States, you've got to file an adjustment and assume you pass your adjustment interview. It's about nine, ten months. Awesome. Valo Don, hello, good day. If your I-601A waiver is approved, is your immigrant visa guaranteed? No, the I-601 waiver is the provisional waiver. What's guaranteed is that they will not prevent you from re-entering the United States uh, for overstaying on your visa or entering the country without inspection. But you still have to go for an interview, prove that you didn't commit fraud, you're not a criminal, you don't have any medical condition or drug abuse that would prevent you from getting a green card, and that whatever application you're there, whether it's a marriage case, parent filing for you, a job sponsorship, it's all legit. Lamoni wants to know, could a person doing a U visa file for their mom? Can a person doing a U visa- A U visa. File for, no they cannot, they have to be a US citizen. All right, Tony Elias Banda. Ooh, is, that, Elias. is that is that is that related to you? Um, no. Because that's an Elias. But this right. question kind of is, Related to me a little okay. bit. Okay. Um, so I'm a green card holder, and I want to know if I can adopt from Africa and file for the person to join me here. The reason why it's related to me because you can't adopt in Ethiopia anymore. Nope, not it's in just Ethiopia. Whack. Right. Not in Ethiopia. You can't. Whack. And the only way you can adopt in 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 another country in Africa is if you live with that child for two years. Then you have to be their legal guardian for two years. Then you got to file for them, and it'll be about two and a half years to come here. Wait until you're a citizen. If the child's an orphan, then you can bring the orphan over to the United States. It's and do, and thank you. You're welcome. And then do the adoption here. Now, now to you. Okay. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> it's a it's a U visa question kind of day because I got another one from Lawatu. Uh -huh. Lawatu says. <clears throat> Can I apply for a U visa, although I, we ha I have overstayed my visa? I've been here for about 20 years. I've worked hard to take care of five children who are back home. I've been paying taxes for 20 years. Um, could, I, uh, could I apply for it? And if yes, could I apply through it through your office? I'm in Washington State. You're, you're entitled to a U visa if you overstayed your time. Whether you qualify is a different story. U visa is given to victims of, of serious crimes, that you were, vic you were a victim of a crime, and that you helped the police or you helped the district attorney prosecute the criminal. If you're able to prove that, yeah, you can get a U visa, and we could certainly help you when you're in Washington and we're in New York. All right. Wait, you didn't ask that, did you? I didn't. Oh, okay, because it's it. another U exactly. visa Exactly. We're just going to keep it going on U <laughs> visa today. This is U visa This is U visa day. U visa day. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I have one from Louis Donaldson. Uh, can you explain the U visa and T visa, which uh, would be better even though you're married to an American? U visa is the victim of a crime that you were here in the United States, like you were, somebody assaulted you, put you in the hospital, 
Um, there's a whole list of, of crimes, serious crimes, serious felonies that you were victimized, that you have an injury as a result of, and that you help the police in the investigation and the DA if required to prosecute that individual. The reason they give you visas is they want people to, s to step forward and say, hey, I'm the victim of a crime. They don't want criminals to go unpunished here in America. A T visa is different. A T visa means that you were, you were trafficked. T means for trafficking. That you were trafficked into the United States for uh, either slavery or, 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 uh, or you were basically you know, tied up and brought in here or you were fraudulently induced to come to the United States for slavery, peonage, which is you have to work off your, your travel, mm -hmm. uh, for it to be a sex worker, um, for, for anything that you were trafficked here to the United States. So, so T visas is for tr victims of trafficking. Uh, U visas are people who are already here who are not trafficked into America, but then were, became victims of crimes here in the United States. U visa day. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa has a non U visa question. Non U visa question. We're breaking the streak. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I don't have a U visa, but if I were to have one. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, Lisa said, What are the forms I need to be submitting if I'm adjusting my status? <sighs> Get ready. <laughs> ready. <laughs> Did you eat your Wheaties this morning, Brad? Yeah, I'm just uh, <laughs> I-45, I-130, I-765, I-131, I-864, I-130A. Did I say I-131? Yeah. I believe you did. Did I say I-864? You did. Yes. I-131, I-864. All right. All right, let's do this. We have a bunch of people on hold. Okay. So let's speak to them. Yes. And then I got Moreno coming in. That's right. I got, I got a beef with him. Ooh, you're, oh. you're beefing I'm with Moreno? I'm beefing with Moreno a little bit. Ooh. All right, but uh, but let's speak to Keon in Clarendon, Jamaica. Keon. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm not bad. What's going on? Nothing much. I have a question on immigration. Okay. Um, it has to do with a waiver, though. Okay. Um, what it is, is that um, for years, uh, my partner, he came to America when he was just a child. Um, what do you mean by partner? Crowd. This is your boyfriend? Husband. Husband. <laughs> okay, so he's your husband. husband. Okay. All right. All right. So he, he, he was a, as a child, he came to America with his mother, who, who married and, and was a citizen of the country and everything. But he got into the wrong crowd. And after that, he, um, he became a drug addict. And, you know, several other issues came up. But however, he was... Um, jailed and deported okay to, to jamaica okay um after that um he was here he, the same drugs follow him here you know he he used to take the drugs i guess the different kind of lifestyle probably depressed him or you know he's a drug he was a drug drug addict all right um what happened now is that he's clean thank god he's now clean his life has changed married kids and the whole work. He's now a businessman doing well for himself and he's done well. Okay, good. What, yeah, thank God for that. Um, what are the possibilities when it comes to waivers for him? Because, well, 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 first of all, getting mm -hmm. a green card, he's never going to get a green card ever in his life. No, no, no. Right. So you're talking mm -hmm. about he wants to either get a visitor's visa or Just some sort a visitor's, of a visitor's yeah, visa. Because now he's okay. A, yeah, so, yeah. so this is how it works. All right, you're watching mm -hmm. me, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. The waiver works like this. All right. Think of a scale mm -hmm. of justice. Okay. Right. On one hand, it, first of all, you got to qualify for the visitor's visa. You got to show that you're going to come to the United States, what you're, you know, and then you're going to return home. Let's assume he qualifies mm -hmm. for the visitor's visa and they say whatever, you know, Mr. Jones, Mr. Smith, whatever his name mm -hmm. is, you qualify, mm -hmm. but for the fact that you have multiple drug arrests and you were deported. So mm -hmm. we don't give people visas mm -hmm. like that. So then you say, okay, right. Mr. Smith, you can file a waiver. So this is how the right. waiver works, okay? All right, scales of justice. In one hand is all the bad crap, okay? Mm -hmm. This is, he has six arrests for drugs. He's got, uh, he was ordered deported. All the bad stuff that he did in his life on one hand. On the mm -hmm. other hand, all the, good, all the good reasons, not that he's doing in his life, but all the good reasons why the United States should want this man to come to America. And if right. the, okay, so what is the good reason 
why the United States wants this man to come to America. If it's, mm-hmm. it's not his good reason, it's what is the, what's in the interest of the United States for him to come to America. So, mm-hmm. for example, if he's a big businessman and it's a huge business deal and he's going to employ people or, or invest mm-hmm. money or whatever it may be, well, yeah, maybe the United States has, has a reason to want him to come. If it's, mm-hmm. you know what, I've straightened out my life I'm a good person now, and I'd love to take my kids to Disney World. Well, you know what they would, the United States would say? That's really lovely, sir. I'm glad you straightened out your life. We're happy that everything's mm-hmm. good with you. But what do we care whether you take your kids to Disney World or not? So, so mm-hmm. on one hand is the reasons why he was deported and all the bad stuff he did. On the other hand is why does the United States want him back to America? And if the mm-hmm. reasons why the United States wants him back in America outweigh the reasons why the United States does not want him back in America, then he gets mm-hmm. the waiver approved. And it's, it's a discretionary basis, but you know, it's like almost like the scales of justice in a way. I'll give you a perfect example. Um, there was a, a very well-known artist from Jamaica, because you're calling me from Jamaica, okay? Mm-hmm. And he had some drug arrests. Uh, he's now mm-hmm. in jail in Miami, okay? Mm-hmm. But prior to this, he had some drug arrests and um, he was deported. Not allowed to come right. back to the United States. But he was right. up for the Grammy Awards. Mm-hmm. Best reggae artist of the year. Wow. So right. he applied. This was before he went to jail. So he applied mm-hmm. for a waiver and he got it. Oh, wow. Because mm-hmm. it's in the United States' interest for him to come to America and right. accept his award. Okay? Mm-hmm. So it depends on what, what the reason is. All right. So if, if I could say, let's say um, mother died and... Um, she had properties and, you know, automatically it will go to her, 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 her only son. That's not in the United States interest. That's in his personal oh. financial interest. Oh. All right. Oh, but okay. what we can yeah. do is if you want, you can have a consultation with us and we can figure out if he can, we can qualify him somehow. So hold mm. on one second. All oh. right. All right. All right. 1-800-529-5465. We're going to speak to Alex. Mm-hmm. Is Moreno ready for us? I, uh all right, he's always ready. All right, so I'm going to speak to Alex first, and then we're going to speak to Moreno. All right, let's speak to Alex. Alex, how are you? I'm doing great, sir. How are you? Good. What's going on? Uh, so I have a few questions, right? So I recently got married to a U.S. citizen. Right. I'm from I'm from Jamaica, mm-hmm. but I'm on the H-2B visa. Great. So I already filled out the form, my wife and I, but... We're a bit confused. We don't know, like, what documents to attach to what form. What documents to attach to what form? Yeah. You're confused. Yes, like, for don't, example... Don't do or, anything. You should actually see me. But, but but tell me, you have a specific... I mean, if you don't know what you need to submit, don't go submit blindly. Because you're going to screw yourself up. Okay? So you have... An, yeah, she wants she, she want to, want to talk to someone before she actually send off the paperwork. Yeah, I think, I think she should have a... Understand. Yeah. I think she should have a consultation and that makes sure everything she's doing is right and we could guide her and then she can do it on her own if she feels comfortable or, or hire us to do it. All right, we, but... We could, do, we, we could do like a over phone um, absolutely. presentation. We can do it over the phone. Hold on one second. Okay, All so... Right. All right, 1-800-529-5465. All right, so we don't have a fourth chair here. If we had a fourth chair, if we had a fourth chair, then David Moreno would come and sit next to me and I would have this conversation with him. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. We don't. We don't. We We should. We should. But don't. Don't. We have the ability to have a fourth chair because we have the hookups. We actually do own a fourth chair. And we have the hookups here. We just didn't, we didn't prepare properly. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> so that's say. what it is. Right. There's it's more preparation. There's a box somewhere. Right, right. It's more, right, right. It's more preparation than anything else. All right. So this is what we're going to do. Did that, was that Groundhog Sam? Who's <laughs> complaining to me? Groundhog Sam just yelled at me in my ear. Uh-huh. What did he say? <laughs> he said, come on, Brad, give me a break. He's right. <laughs> He's right. He's right. Can't be wanting a chair 18 minutes before showtime. Groundhog Sam <laughs> took the chair. He's sitting <laughs> in it. I was about to say, is it Groundhog Sam's job to bring the chair? Yes. He's got to do something, right? <laughs> That's how he pays rent. That, he's got to pay rent. <laughs> he's like, come on, Brian. I'm in the chair myself. Can you want me to get out of my chair? Give it to Moreno. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, actually, yes, we do. <laughs> do you know how hot the topic is of who is Groundhog Sam? It's not me. So in you the obviously comments? know it's not. It's Brad. not me. It's not Brad. It's not me. It's not definitely me. Definitely isn't me. I'm all right, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you two to skadoodle. We're going to skedaddle, yeah. All right, we're going to do a bra education right now. We're going to yep. skedaddle Moreno in. We're going to yep. talk to him, and then we're going to skedaddle him out, and then skadoodle you back in. We'll be back. We'll be back. So much skedaddling and doodling. Yes, let's watch this bra education. If my green card has been revoked for any reason, will I have trouble getting a visiting visa? If your green card was revoked, it was revoked because you've done something bad, not something good. So my guess would be that you would have trouble getting any type of visa, and before you go to the U.S. Embassy for any reason, you should go and speak to an attorney first. All right, so that didn't really work out very well. <laughs> All right, so as David Moreno gets, gets started here, I have some paperwork here about David Moreno. He is our fabulous criminal defense attorney here at Spar and Bernstein. He's a former Manhattan district attorney. He's been named one of the top, he's been named one of the top national black lawyers, top 40, under 40. He does not hear a word you're saying. She wants you to skadoodle this way. Um, and he's been under the top. Blah, 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 blah. He has been named the National Black Lawyers Top 40 Under 40, Top 10 Lawyers Under the Age of 40 for 2016, Top 100 Trial Attorneys, and not only that, he has just been named as the ex Expert Network Distinguished Lawyer, as well as a Super Lawyer, fast on his feet, coming in, getting ready, and in the chair. In under one minute and 36 seconds, a new record. I'm like a pit crew. I'm like a pit crew. It's a pit crew. We really need to practice this because uh, we needed to get it in under a minute next time. Okay. All, All right. right? Yeah. We did it in a minute. I was timing. It's been a minute 36. But you did a fabulous job. I told everybody already that you told me that <laughs> I looked on this cup. If we bring the cup in closer, this is Moreno. This is the guy who said that uh, I look like... The Rock. No, I'm not here. The Rock. Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, The Rock is this guy with the uh, eyebrow. Oh, okay. Dwayne Johnson. All right. So uh, recently, recently, um, uh, we had a, uh, saw an AVO review posted by this guy, Jerry. Let's, let's look at this. It was on March 25th, 2018. And he wrote, Mr. Moreno proved my innocence and gave me back my life. I had intercourse with a woman who wanted more than one encounter, and when I told her that would have been the last time we would be involved, she then lied on me saying I assaulted her. I was arrested and lost my job in the process after paying another law firm who did not do much to help me. That particular lawyer wanted me to take a plea deal for a crime I did not commit. I heard about Sparn Bernstein on a radio station and called for a consult. I decided to try Sparn Bernstein and I met with Mr. Moreno, who worked on my case. Mr. Moreno was honest throughout the case, made himself available when I needed to speak to him. His office is very knowledgeable, organized, and professional. I would recommend him to anyone who needs his legal advice. So, David, this was a rape charge, right, that this guy, Paul, said he was lied on. Mm -hmm. Okay, the woman made it up. He didn't do it. He didn't want to take a plea deal. His other lawyer wanted, wanted him to take the plea deal. Okay, what were the facts of this case? Well, the facts of this case w were actually very, very uh, complicated. Um, this is a case where both of the parties were known to one another. Uh, there was a pre-existing sexual relationship. Um, our client was from Jamaica. The accuser in this case was also from Jamaica. They had uh, a prior sexual relationship back in Jamaica uh, some years ago uh, and continued this relationship when they got in the United States. My client at the time, Jerry, uh, was involved with another woman and decided to break things off with, with the accuser. And as a result, the accuser went to the police and said that he forcibly raped her. So how, how many years was he looking at? Well, uh, rape in the first degree in New York County, uh, d depending on what your record is, if it's your first offense, the range is anywhere from five years to 25 years in, in state prison. Rape and, and, is obviously a very serious case. And this was basically, she said, 
he raped me. He said your client, I didn't rape her. There was no question they had sex. No question. There was an intercourse happened. It was just whether the sex was consensual or the sex was forced on this woman. Correct. Okay. How old was this case? Uh, this case had been pending for over a year and a half before we took it over. So now when your client, his name was, was Jerry, he comes to you, what was his emotional state like? Oh, uh, he, was, he was a wreck. Um, he felt like, to me, he told me, you know, in, in no uncertain words, that his back was against the wall. He felt hopeless. Um, his, his previous attorney, um, all he cared about was pushing the plea on this guy. Now, we have a, a, a client who not only is facing serious prison time, but also he's, he's looking at being deported from the country that, that he lives in. Um, and, and he lost his job. This is Jerry here. This is Jerry. If he's found guilty, he's getting deported. He's getting deported. He's going to stay prison first. For breaking up what he claims for breaking up with a girl. Correct. Going to stay prison first and then he's getting deported. Um, he came to me and, and I, I told him, I said, look, I cannot make you any promises. Um, what you're telling me sounds credible. Uh, I'll do my best to, you know, investigate what you're saying and find ways to uh, support um, and, and, and make your story more credible. Now, let me ask you this, and we're going to hear Jerry's side of the story of for a second. But you're a former district attorney, so you were you were presented with these cases all the time. As a former district attorney, what is the di you know you know because you know we're saying we're saying this girl lied on him. Okay, that's what our defense is. That's what he's saying. You're a former district attorney. Some woman comes in and says, this man raped me. What process is the district attorney's office going through? What process are the detectives going through mm -hmm. to determine whether she's making a credible claim or not? Before we even get to, I believed my client that she was lying Absolutely, on absolutely. Um, well, first I got to say that the position that law enforcement, the, the, the police officers, the detectives, the DA's office is in whenever there's a domestic violence claim or a rape allegation is a, a very, very tenuous one in that, you know, you don't always know what to believe, but when someone is making an allegation like this, you have to take it seriously. Um, so what they, the, the standard procedure is, is to gather as much, as much information from the victim as you can, and then- This is as from the district from, attorney's from, from side. the government's perspective. From the government's perspective. And, you know, sit down. You sp it, it's different from county to county. Right, but you, in, were, you were a district attorney in Manhattan. In Manhattan. Uh, you gather information. Uh, if, there, if there are hospital records, you obviously get the hospital records. If there's video surveillance, you obviously get the video surveillance. If there are other witnesses, either after the fact or before the fact that see, you know, uh, observe what happened just before, whether they're at a bar and they're in a the house or, you know, the victim ran out and, and someone saw her running out or she had visible injuries. Um, you want to make sure you preserve all of that stuff so that way you have, uh, you know, a strong case moving forward. Okay, so basically the district attorney has to take the, take the allegation seriously. Absolutely. And as long as they don't see any inconsistency in what she's saying, I guess they can't say, sorry, go away. You're claiming somebody raped you. We're taking this very seriously. Have to. And, and, and maybe, maybe many times people, people say things that didn't happen. Sometimes people say things that did happen. In this particular case, this man, our client, Jerry, who eventually went to David Moreno, said it didn't happen. Yes, we had sex. Yes, we had a relationship. Nobody says I don't know her. Nobody says we didn't have a sexual relationship. It was consensual. I did not force myself on her. Now, what did you do mm -hmm. as, a, as, as, as a defense attorney to now say, okay, I'm gonna take this case. I believe in this man. I believe, I believe he has a defense. I believe in what he's saying. But you believing in what he's saying and you saying, yeah, it sounds believable to me, isn't enough. Yeah. You now have to convince perhaps a jury, perhaps a judge, certainly the prosecutor, that we got a good case here. What do you do? Well, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that obviously handling these kind of cases is, is sometimes conflicting, right? You want to make sure, especially as a defense attorney, that you do things that are consistent with, with, with your value system, correct? Right. Um, with this client, I didn't just take his word, you know, as gospel. You know, I did my own independent investigation. Uh, oftentimes, a resource I would use in a case like this would be hiring an investigator. In this situation, you know, the client didn't have the money needed to hire an investigator, so I actually went out and I spoke to some of the, the witnesses in, in, in the family that were, were around. Well, okay, so now there is no witnesses who actually were in the bedroom while Correct. this happened. 
So you spoke, what would they have to say? Because they weren't physically there. Nobody, nobody was in the bedroom. It wasn't like a big, you know, uh, family gathering where everybody watches them have, have a sexual relationship. Of course. So what did they have to offer? Well, uh, 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 several things. Uh, one, a friend of the victim uh, spoke to the victim, the alleged victim, right after the incident happened. A friend. Who, now, was this our client's friend or the victim's friend? The victim's friend. The victim's friend. The victim's friend. Victim's friend. Uh -huh. And, you know, she was reluctant to speak to me. But in, 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 in scouring through her Facebook page, there were, there were comments um, on both the public walls of the alleged victim and this friend kind of talking about the encounter with my client. Uh, and then there were also posts on, again, on the walls, not in a private message. And I know Facebook's been in the news a lot, right? right about right, privacy, right. it's kind of funny. Right. Um, on the walls about, you know, uh, how she's so upset that he's not gonna be with her, him anymore, her anymore and how she's going to make him pay. Um, and actually this, this friend posted stuff like, please don't do anything stupid. And even after, you know, my client was arrested, there were more posts from the friend saying, why would you do that to this man? And what was what was the victim's response to all of this on Facebook, at least? Well, her response on Facebook was just like he he's getting what he deserves. Consistently, he's getting what he deserves. The DA was unaware of all of this Facebook stuff. The DA didn't look at their social media. They didn't. I don't know if they did, and they and they didn't disclose it. Now, there's a case, a seminal case in criminal defense called uh, Brady. Now, if the if the district attorney's office would have viewed these messages on Facebook, right? and saw that the messages would be something that would be favorable to us, they're under full duty to disclose this to us, right? So I would assume that if they saw those messages, they would have disclosed them because they're under a duty to do so. Uh, in any event, they didn't. Um, I disclosed them to the, to the prosecutor, and I asked the prosecutor, I said, look, I know you spoke to your victim. Um, again, I came on the case at the 25th hour. The case was already primed ready, for trial. Ready, ready to go to trial. It was on the trial calendar. And, and, um, and, and, this, and, and his former, just make it clear, his former attorney was having him plead deal to what would ended up being an aggravated felony and getting him deported for life. Correct. Yeah, correct. They, they wanted him to uh, take a 10-year prison sentence. Right. Uh, obviously, this client was, was not, go, not in a position to do so. Um, I, I, I told the prosecutor, I said, before we try this case, I have no problem trying this case. No pro I'll try this case right now. I told her a, a million times, I'll try this case right now. But if you don't want to waste your time and mine, you should take a look at this stuff. And she said, I'm going to take a look at it and get back to you. She took a look at it. Then she, she brought my client in. She spoke to him, got his side of the story, which you don't always get a chance to do. Spoke to her so boss. So you allowed your client to go be interviewed by the prosecutor? Yeah, with me. With you there? Not, not, not by himself. Right. With me in and a that's controlled unusual, environment. Though. It is very unusual. Right. And in 99% of cases, you, would you never, know, you would you never, never hear from a defendant. Okay, you know, you would never hear from a defendant in this situation because I had stuff that corroborated his version of events, right? Uh, from from the stuff that was very public that came out of the alleged victim's mouth, from you know witnesses to the actions after the fact, uh, to even you know text messages between the, the victim and my client that sort of were consistent with my client's version of events. I was very comfortable, you know, putting him in front of the. Now government. was there was. After the DA spoke to your clients and looked at this, and you know, you can you can you can take messages to mean different things. Okay, so when when somebody says, for example, he's getting what he deserves, well, he's getting what he deserves because he broke up with me. He's getting what he deserves because he raped me. Those could what what was it that you were able to prove to the to the DA that what this woman meant was. He's getting what he deserved be to go to jail because he broke up with me and he broke my heart. Mm -hmm. Not he's getting what he deserved because he raped me. Yeah, it was it was a number of things, um, but I would say what was most persuasive to 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 the DA was once I pointed her to specific messages and I can't get to the content of those messages. Uh, she was able to go back to the alleged victim and ask her directly direct pointed questions. And after asking those questions, the victim actually said, I don't want to go forward anymore. Um, I'm sorry I did this. She apologized to the government, which is not okay, which is not enough. My client was arrested. He spent time in jail. Um, but she actually recanted. She recanted her story. Correct. Wow. Now, does she get in trouble for what could possibly be a false accusation? Absolutely. She can. 
She, she did, can't, the, did the DA's office do anything about that? No, she didn't. And it, there were a number of reasons why. Um, I think part of the decision-making process from the government uh, was that the, the alleged victim had been through other things in her life uh, that were troubling. Um, so I don't want to say they gave her a pass. Obviously, what she did was wrong, but I don't think it would have furthered uh, justice you know, to, to lock this woman up because she was troubled. She was mm -hmm. a troubled woman. So in the end, your client did not have a deportable offense. Correct. He is now living in America. Correct. But before he came to you, he, he was basically taken, he was given, this is the deal. 10 years in jail, you're getting deported for a rape you didn't commit or go to trial and then go to jail for 20 years. That or was basically his 25, choices. 25, yeah. Or 25 years. And, and he said, I don't like either one of these choices. These are terrible choices. I'm gonna, and he called Spar and Bernstein, spoke to David Moreno, who just did what a good lawyer does, which is your due diligence. You go and look at their Facebook. Look at them. I talk about it all the time, social media. I talk about it all the time. You want to find out about somebody? Go on their social media. Go look at their Instagram. Go look at their Facebook. You can find out everything you need to know about people these days, unfortunately or unfortunately. In this case, it was fortunate for our client. And, and, this, and this woman wrote on Facebook, he's getting what he deserves. And, and David Moreno was able to prove he's getting what he deserves, not because he raped her, but because he broke up with her. And this guy went from being offered 10 years in jail and a straight airplane ride back to Jamaica for life as an aggravated felon to living in America, and she dropped the charges. Fantastic job, David. Thank you. And for everybody else out there, if you, God forbid, you ever need a really good criminal defense attorney, a, a fabulous criminal defense attorney, please save our number. And the best way to save our number the best way, I am telling this to you, nobody believes me, but I'm telling it to you, because when you actually need the criminal defense attorney, you don't got the number. You dial the number and hang up. You actually literally dial 1-800-529-5465. You, liter you literally dial it. It's important. And then why do you dial it? Because now you have the phone number locked in, our, in your phone. You'll hear Fiona go, hi, Sparn Bernstein, would you like to get on? Our radio show, it's not a radio, our television show, it's not a television, on Facebook show. <laughs> um, and you'll say, nah, but thanks, I'm just saving the number, and click, and you hang up. It takes you 15 seconds of your life to dial the number and hang up. And then, God forbid, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, you never know when you need a good criminal defense attorney. You have the number safe for life. So that's why you dial it. 1-800-529-5465. And the reason why you're dialing it and not just saving it is you want to dial and hear the voice of somebody who works at Spar and Bernstein. And then you know you've got the right number saved. Too many times we're putting the wrong telephone number in our phone. And that's why you dial it. 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-LAW-LINK. 1-800-529-5465. David Moreno, awesome job. I forgive you. Forgive me for what? Calling you the rock? Calling me the rock. I think it's that a was a compliment. compliment. It's a compliment. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. Um, look forward to joining the show again soon. All right. So let's watch this for education. What happens if I overstay on my visitor's visa? If you overstay on your visitor's visa, you're, in a, you're an out-of-status illegal alien. No better, no worse than somebody who ran across the border in terms of being out of status. You gotta fix that problem immediately. All right, so we're back. 1-800-529-5465. Let's go to Sonia in Fort Myers, Florida. Sonia. Hello. Hi, Sonia, what's happening? Hi, um, my husband was recently charged with a deep first um, offense DUI. Mm -hmm. I'm just calling to see, would that affect his um, H2B visa, yep. work visa? Yes, it does. It, it does? Yeah, every, okay. every offense affects it. If you have a criminal offense, they're not going to give you another visa. What is your status here? Oh, me? I'm a citizen. So why don't you file for him? 
Okay, would that have affect him if I should file for him? Would that yes, have affect him, yes. like, you know, immigration process? Yes, because DWI is, is, a, is a deportable offense. DUI is not. But even DUI could, could affect good moral character and could affect his adjustment of status. You definitely, definitely need the help of a good lawyer. Luckily for you, you're talking to one. So hold on one second. Okay. All right. Let's go to Tony in Brooklyn. Tony. Hello. Hi, Tony. What's up? Uh, hello. So I'm calling you um, to ask you something. Then, so uh, I have my brother. Then, so he come in America with a CCD visa. But um, at this time, he went to embassy. They asked you something when he tried to get uh, the visa before he, uh, he go to America. Now he get married. He tried to get uh, to. Tony, America. I'm not getting you. Who, who who are we talking about? Your friend is where? Hello. Yeah. Who are we talking about? Your friend. Where is he? He's no, he, my brother. He's your my brother. brother. Okay, where where yeah. country is he in? He's in America now. He's in America now. Yeah. Where he is got he from? Married. He got married. He where got, is he from? He's living in Brooklyn. He got married. He got a, a C on the visa. He has a student visa now, and he got married. C, to, C on the C on the visa. A crewman's visa. A crewman. Yeah. Crewman visa. Yeah. Crewman, okay. So if he came on a crewman's visa. Now, was, oh, yeah. he, was he lucky enough to marry someone in the military? Uh, yeah. He's in the military, his wife? No, no, his wife is not in the military. His okay. wife is a... So, he's, um, so you would need a... Yeah, yeah he's not going to be able to adjust his status because he came on a crewman's visa. He needs what's called... Yeah, the problem... I, okay, know. I know that's the problem. So let me explain. Let me explain. He came on a crewman's visa. He can't adjust yes. his status. Now, if he's, yes. he's lived here illegally for more than a year... Where is he, from Africa somewhere? I'm taking a guess. He's from Africa? Uh, okay. So I can, Are we can having the come. same conversation with Tony? Tony, listen to me. A answer my question. Is your yeah. brother from Africa? No, he's not from Africa. Where is he he's from? from Haiti. He's from Haiti. He's from Haiti. Oh, okay. I misunderstood the, the accent. I apologize. So he came as a crewman from Haiti. Okay. Yeah. So when he came as a crewman from Haiti... All right. That was he was supposed to be working on a boat or whether it's a cruise ship or a boat or whatever it is. He didn't go join yeah. the boat. He stayed here. Yeah. He married an American. How long yeah. has he been in the United States? He's been in America 2011. Since all right, So he missed the TPS because he had to be here since 2010 for the TPS. No, no. He come in 2011. He didn't get the TPS. He didn't get the TPS because he, he came after. TPS. Exactly. So now... He needs what's called a provisional waiver. A provisional waiver says there would be a hardship to his wife if the wife was forced to go live in Haiti with him for 10 years. That's a, whoa, that's a pretty big, yeah, baby's upset. That's a pretty big, that's a pretty big hardship to go to Haiti right now. So he needs a provisional yeah. waiver. He would go back to Haiti for two weeks to pick up his green card and come back and we can help. Hold on one second. Whew. Was... Woo, 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 woo. And welcome back. Oh, Thank we're you. back. Thank welcome you. back. <laughs> and welcome back. We were all here right. the whole time. So let's, <laughs> add, let's do some social media check in. Okay. All right. All right. And then we got to get to some other stuff we got here. Cool. All right. So let's do some social media check in first. All right. So I have one from Serge Zoe. Serge Zoe. Yeah. So I came here legally in 2016 with a B1 visa. I got my girlfriend. She's American born and we have a beautiful one year old son that was born here in the US as well. How long do you think it would take for me to get my green card after we get married? About nine months. Nine months to do an adjustment. It's nine months. Camera's not coming off of me. It's nine months. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna let you. I was just. Say I, was just I had nothing else to say after that. So I just kept so, um, <laughs> just nine months. Um, ministering Godway okay. wants to know. My brother filed for my sister in December of 2012. Can she now go ahead and get married? Yes, you, you could. The only two. Yes, the only time. <laughs> We're a little slow there on the cameras today. <laughs> yes, um, the only time you got to worry about marriage when you've been petitioned for is when you're petitioned for by a parent. So if a parent petitions you and you get married, uh, if, if your parent's a citizen, you've now got married, you've now pushed your green card back another seven, eight, nine years of waiting. 
if your parents are permanent resident and you got married, that's the end of the case. You can never get a green card. So you always have to worry when a parent is filing for you, getting married. Brother, sister filing for you has no bearing. You get married, guess what? Your spouse gets a green card the same day you do. And it doesn't delay you in any way, shape, or form. All right, so I have one from Rothiani, Shay. Mm -hmm. Hi, my mom is a U.S. green card holder and she's sponsoring me since, or been sponsoring me since April 2014. Right now I'm over 21 years old and unmarried, so I want to know how long I'm going to wait for this. When did mom file? Um, she just says that she was sponsoring her since April of 2014. Okay, so it was April 2014 is when they filed. Okay. All right, so, whoops. I pressed the wrong button here. So um, you go on the visa bulletin. It's very simple. Okay, go to travel.state.gov, go to visa bulletin. And on visa bulletin, they say that unmarried children over the age of 21 of U.S. citizens, parents filed on April 8th, 2011. That's the priority dates that they, people are getting their green cards. So this particular question said that they were filed for in 2014. Yes. So it sounds like there's three more years of waiting. All right. Queen of my castle, Queen which of my castle. we have not heard from in a little bit. So okay. welcome back, Queen of my castle. She says, how can I send you a document for you to look at and then give me some advice? Um, there's snail mail, there's fax, there's email. What you first do is call 1-800-529-5465. You're gonna set up a consultation. If you wanna do it over the phone, that's fine. And then the uh, client service uh, director who sets up your consultation for you, they will give you an email for you to send your documents. Now you're gonna say, oh, I don't have a scanner. Well, you know what, you don't need scanners anymore. Just literally take a photo of it and email it off to us, and then I'll have it ready when we have our consultation. All right, so I have one from Rosemary Mitchell. Mm -hmm. All right, hello, good evening, everyone. She said hood evening. So I'm gonna say, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna hood evening? Hood. Hood evening. Hood evening. Like, hood evening. I don't know if it's <laughs> hood that? evening. I thought, I, thought, I thought it was more like hood evening. Uh, or, or, or good evening in the hood. You don't know which way. That's what I thought. Like, no, no, I'm taking it more like hood evening. Oh, hood evening. Oh, hood evening. I like right. your I thought it more like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to give her a better from the dad and say, and say she was in. Hood evening. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have a question. <laughs> or it's possible. <laughs> just just, at, just out of problem. I, I, I'll give you one more possibility. Okay. I don't know if you've noticed where your fingers go on the typewriter, but the G is right next to the H. It is. Okay, so she could have meant good evening and just right. missed the G and hit the H. It's very possible, I, too. I feel like that's probably what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite part of all that was yeah. that you call this a typewriter. Yes. <laughs> that's the show my age. Yeah. That's the keyboard. Excuse yeah. me. Oh. Excuse me, my millennial yeah. friends over yeah. here. The millennials are yes. here. Yes, excuse me, my millennial friends. <laughs> millennial <laughs> check. It's called the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I have a question. If someone got deported, how long does it take for them to come back to the U.S.? And what kind of form do they need to reapply for them to come back? Thank you and God bless. Never. You don't come back to America if you were deported. You were deported because America doesn't want you. So you Aww. can't come back. I'm sorry to say, you can't harsh. come back forever. Now, if... The deportation happened more than 10 years ago. There is a waiver that you can file for, but you still need to be re-sponsored for your green card. If you got deported because of a criminal offense, that criminal offense may or may not prevent you from filing a second waiver. Maybe yes, maybe no. But there's no just, oh, I got deported like three or four years ago and I'd like to now come back, what form? There's no form one, two, three, four, five to fill out. It's a whole process. Carly wants to know, I applied for my green card, got an RFIE, and after sending in the documents, how long should I wait to get a work permit? Um, because you got an RFE, that means basically you screwed up. Ooh. So your application never went anywhere out of the mailroom. Once you submitted all the documents, assuming it was done properly at this point, figure four and a half to five months from the time they received your documents. Let's do this though, because we're, um, I want to. I want to get through everything here. We got a lot. We got a good show still ahead of us. Yeah, yeah we, we got a, a lot great. Of show we got a lot of show ahead of us still. All right. So earlier today, um, 
And by the way, please leave your questions with Belgium Kim and Jonathan Yo-Yo Elias we're because we them. are going to still be taking them in about 10, 12 minutes. We're going to finish up with a really strong social media push right at the end. Okay. Push. We'll be ready. We're, wait, wait, wait. wait. Now, now do it again. There you go. There you go. There you go. I did it like five All right, times. That, yeah, that, all right. You were, look like, you, were, you, look like, you look like you were like uh, auditioning for Black Panther 2. Oh, <laughs> like speak it into existence. I'm going to start working right, on that. Yeah, look like you look like you had like some acting. new superpower right. or something for Black <laughs> Panther 2. Hey, I'm here for that. I'm here for it. Wakanda. All right. So, uh, <laughs> any event, uh, earlier today I spoke with Carlos Lopes. Now, Carlos came to the United States. States uh, with his mom from Brazil when he was 12 years old. He attends Northeastern University. He's about 21 right now, but he runs his own media production company. He's also a DACA recipient, so he's made the best and he, of wow. what of, of his lot. He's, Amazing. he's despite all everything that he's gone through, he's been able to run his own media company and 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 produce music that's pretty well known. Nice. Let's watch. So I'm here with today Carlos Lopes. He is a DACA recipient. He is a budding music producer with an amazing career ahead of him. He's also a social activist now as part of his music productions. Carlos, how are you doing? Thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely. So Carlos, you're originally from Brazil. Yes, I'm from Brazil. When did you first come to the United States? I was 12 years old when I first came. And how old are you now? 21. And, and and your family moved to America. Why'd they come to America? I had family in America previously. My aunt had, had moved here about 20 years ago. So then I came here with my mom. I don't have a dad. So mm -hmm. me and my mom came to visit. We saw the opportunities and we decided to stay. Now, now, when you came to visit, did your mom say to you, hey, we're moving to America? Or it was just, you real, you're 12 years old. You just follow whatever mom says to do, right? It was sort of uh, uh, me and my mom. I had asked her to stay in order to learn English, but we didn't really understand the whole process of immigration. So we kind of just came and we overstayed our visa. And then, you know, reality hits and we... So what was the reality of, okay, you're going to come to America, you know, it, you know, the streets are paved with gold. Obviously, it's not. What was the reality for you that hit, especially once you overstayed on your visa? As a kid, not so much. Growing up, it wasn't really a thing that I thought about. It was more uh, up until high school and, you know, senior year approached and college and all those, you know, financial aid, taking a loan out. That's when it really hit me that, you know, I couldn't do the things that an American kid right. could. So you went, to, you went to high school here. I guess you started in junior high school and everything was good up until the time you became an adult. Is that correct? Yes, about like end of junior year when the whole college process started. That's when I really started to learn about my situation. Now, how long have you had the DACA? Two years. Two so years now. Since, yes. So up to that point, you, and it was around the time when you were applying for college or you got DACA after you were already trying to get into school? I, I got DACA after. So I graduated in 2014 um, and then at that point, I had no DACA, um, so I, you know, got accepted into a few schools. But then, you know, I figure out the whole financial aid process and taking a loan out of the bank, and I, you know, I couldn't do that. So I went on to community college, and in community college, that's when I received DACA. I understand. And then at that point, you were able to transfer. I understand you're at Northeastern now. What are you studying yeah, there? Business management. Was it disappointing when when you had to go to community college? You felt you were able to do more. You you weren't able to do what you wanted to do. How did it make you feel? So Somerville, Mass, where I moved to, is a very diverse city. There's kids from all over the place. And growing up in that environment, at first you're hanging out with the Brazilians, but then I saw an opportunity to start being involved with the American kids, where you know they're taking honors classes and. AP classes and that's when I kind of got into that friend group and as they went on to go to college I was ready to go to college but then I really figure out that I couldn't so it, you know it felt kind of disappointing because I knew I was capable of you know going on a four-year university and doing uh, relatively well but you know seeing them go and I was like you know what like me giving up now isn't gonna help my situation in the future so I kind of accepted the fact you know, that I can't go to four-year university now, so I might as well go to community college. And there I worked very hard 
which you know got me into Northeastern University, which is relatively a very hard school to get. But overall, you know, there was a disappointment, but I, I just accepted and I kept going. How did you motivate yourself? Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying is you said you accepted it. Okay, you, you obviously have a lot to give this world and we're gonna talk about your music career in a second. Uh, but how did you motivate yourself? You say, wow, I just got hit over the head. I can't do what I want to do. I see all my friends, especially the Americans, being able to go off to school, get financial aid. How did you wake up in the morning and motivate yourself to say, okay, today's going to be a better day. This is, you know, I'm going to survive. I'm going to be able to do it. You know, in my head it was like, I came from a very small city in Brazil to probably the best country in the world. And I was like, if I give up now, then... You know, I, I, I just felt that, that I had something to do and that I had to prove myself. And if, if I moved here, then there was a reason for me to keep going. There was no reason for me to stop. Now, now I know that you are a budding music producer. You have a lot of followers on YouTube. A lot of your music has to do with the immigration experience. You're, you're not the performer. You are the producer. How do you put your experience into the music of the artists that you're producing? So I started a company about a year ago and a couple of the artists that I've worked with uh, come from immigration background, including uh, a kid I grew up with, Prophet, who's Arabic. So he also came here when he was two years old and the situation kind of got resolved. And then I also worked with this guy, Kyle Bent, who essentially did this song about uh, President Trump, uh, right. talks about Trump and stuff. and and. You know, me coming from an immigration background, I kind of understand that. So it facilitates my uh, way of working with that type of music. How'd you get into the music business? How did you learn to do this? I actually, I make videos. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm film director. About a year ago, I thought to myself about this whole DACA situation and, you know, how me getting a job might be complicated in the future due to, you know, that could be dissolved. So I thought to myself, if I start a company now, I can guarantee something for my future that, you know, regardless of me having papers or not, I'll be able to work by myself and, you know, make money on my own rather than depend upon a job to make money. So what what are some of the messages that's in, in the music that you're filming, that you're making these videos for? I work with a variety of music, but I have, I worked with this guy, Kyle Bain, who really um, his music is very positive. He doesn't rap about, you know, the casual stuff that I usually see in music. What's like the casual stuff you would see in music and what does he rap about? Casual stuff you see in music, you know, is, is guys talking about girls, money, and, and all of that. Right. And, you know, I understand that's part of the industry. But then there's also positive music where people talk about, you know, just uh, being a better person and, you know, changing, having better values, things like that. And then also this guy, Profit, is, is about the come up. So essentially working hard to get where you want to get in life. And, you know, regardless of what situation you're in to really keep going until uh, you reach success. So what what are your okay, so how many artists how many, how many videos have you done? I mean you're so you're basically the videographer. How many videos have you done and what are you most proud about of all the videos you've done? I've done probably about twenty videos so far since we started this. There are videos that I'm more proud of in terms of passing a better message, such as Kyle Bent the president but then there's also videos where I'm proud of the artistic aspect of it in terms of you know uh, creativity and the editing and all of that what makes you happy about the artistic value of, of what you did you know in this industry is really about uh, being different and you know being coming up with your own ideas rather than trying to copy it's, it's it's really branding yourself in a way that people look up to you and you know they're like okay this this group of kids, they're unique in the way that they produce these videos. And to me is I want to grow my brand to the point that one day I can influence people to do uh, better. You know, it's right. not just about the artistic aspect. It's really growing a brand to the point that I can influence people to, you know, do things differently and, and you know, maybe help people. So you're now a DACA recipient. You started this own your own company. You're you're successful. You're in school, uh, full time, getting a business degree. You're an artist. You you're 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 presenting a positive image for DACA recipients, for immigrants, for just people in general, for humanity. You have a message for Donald Trump. 
I do for Donald Trump and uh, Republicans, Democrats, if this message ever gets to you. We just want to be given a chance. Uh, we're not here to take anybody's jobs. Uh, we're not here to harm anybody. We really just want to prove ourselves and build a career and build a life in the country that we have grown up in. We've learned the culture. We've learned the language. Uh, we've learned like the food. We are essentially part of this country, but when it comes down to, you know, a piece of document, we're not. So all I have to say is that we really just want to be given a chance to prove ourselves. Well, you have proven yourself and you're certainly contributing. I hope they are listening to all of this. What's your American dream? You know, someone waves a magic wand and you see yourself 20 years from now. What's your dream? I'm going to be at the top of the media industry. It's not a dream. I'm, it's going to happen. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. How do people find out about BT Living? Living? And I understand yes. it's because you're always on the B team in sports. I read I read about you, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. So an athlete you weren't, but uh, an artist and a music producer and a videographer, certainly you're, you're the A team. How do people find out about you? You guys can find us on Instagram, uh, at bt.living, um, no G. And then Facebook and YouTube, if you guys just type in BT Living, uh, we'll pop up the first one in the list. Carlos, thanks for coming on, uh, and best of luck to you. We'll be following you, and, and uh, hopefully, eventually, you and all the dreamers be able to stay here. I'm sure it's going to happen. Nobody, nobody is going to end up deporting millions of kids who came here uh, at a young age. Uh, eventually, the political process will catch up to you, and hopefully in 20 years from now, we'll see you at the top. Thanks for Thank coming you. on. I all right. Thank you. All right, Carlos Lopes, his American dream. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool story. You know, we like the best. Hmm. We when we said, "What's your American dream?" Yeah, and and he says. And he says, oh, in 20 years, I'm going to be on top of it's the, not only the dream, music it's world. Fact. And he said, it's a Factual. fact. I like and, that. And, and uh, Jonathan's like, yeah, you go, Carlos. Yeah, yeah. You, you have go. to speak things. We like things. that. This yeah, like, you need the confidence. You Absolutely. need the confidence, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, uh, any event, we only have a few minutes left. Let's do one or two questions each quickly okay. in social media. And then we're going to get to our social media moments of the day. Okay. Awesome. I have one from Tanisha McNabb. Yes. All right. So if you file tax as a married woman, but filing separately, will that cause a problem when you go get your green card interview? Yes, because one of the things we always talk about when you're applying for your green card through marriage is proving it's a bona fide marriage. How do you prove it's a bona fide marriage? Uh, one of the ways is that you have a financial relationship. You have a financial relationship in the assets and proceeds of the marriage, and you have a financial relationship in the debts of the marriage. As soon as you start filing taxes, married filing separately, you're saying, I'm not interested in this man's debt. And he's saying, I'm not interested in your debt. And therefore, now there's gonna start questioning about the validity of marriage. Best thing in the world is file married jointly. Jay has a question, and Jay says, is it a felony to work on your dad's social security number if he's not getting any government benefits and you're out of status? Yes, it's a felony, it's fraud. Can't do it, okay? It's an absolute, absolute crime. There's no ands or so buts about it. And there you have it. And there you have it. There you have there it. It's go. a crime. It's it is. a crime. It Don't is. Do it. Don't do it. Don't All right. do it. Not unless you want to do the time. As they said, right? <laughs> Don't do the crime unless you want to do it the time. Yeah. That's right. All right. Social media moment of the day. Our social media moment of the day goes to Mulvia Clark. And Mulvia Clark showed us the power of sharing today because she said, I shared this show and one of my friends came in for a consultation with Marina today and another one has an appointment very soon. Okay. Boom. Oh, I, not only is it a drum roll, that's a clapping. Right. That's, a, that's, that's, a, a, that's, a, that's a major clapping. That's a major, there we go. <laughs> oh wow, you look, you look like, like a Star Wars character. Yeah. You know, uh, what is that Jar Jar Banks you look like? Jar Jar Banks. Yeah, well you were doing like this, you know? <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Right. Looks like Brad is crumping over here. Yeah. That's how he was dancing earlier. Yeah, that's not how I dance. <laughs> that's not how I dance. You were twerking over in the I, front I, here, I, I, I know. Yeah, yeah, I twerk privately. That's not how I dance. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I got some rhythm, Jonathan. Just really? Invite me to one of your bar mitzvahs. I got you. Okay? Just I got invite you. me. I'll, Every be, I'll be one of when they, they, they'll be one, they, the dancers. Yeah. Or the, uh, yeah, yeah, I danced the whole time. I will though. dance the whole time. Right. Don't worry. Wow. Right. I got it. 
Okay. I will right. be sending <laughs> our film crews out there. Yeah, that's, 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 right. that's something we need to that's film. That's Absolutely. a segment. That's a segment. <laughs> all right, we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching. So, Sam, as part of the production, we have to say this disclaimer at the end of the show. Do you mind reading it for me? Okay, but you know, Brad, I have to do everything around here. It's bad enough. I've got to remember everything that happened on the episode from the previous day. Forget it. I'll do it. The proceeding was information only and not specific legal advice. Consult an attorney about your individual situation. Prior successful results do not guarantee a similar outcome in the future. To make an appointment with the Spar and Bernstein Law Firm, located at 225 Broadway in New York City, call 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-529-5465. Easy to remember, 1-800-LAWLINK. That's 1-800-L-A-W-L-I-N-K. Once again, make a call to 1-800-529-5465. And of course, link up with the law offices of Spar and Bernstein, located at 225 Broadway on the fifth floor. If I were you out there, make the call, make the link, make the connection, make it Spar and Bernstein. 1-800-L-A-W-L-I-N-K. That's 1-800-529-5465. 5465 and now conveniently located in Hartford, Connecticut on 1 Congress Street. Visit us in Connecticut or in New York at 225 Broadway. That's 1-800-529-5465. 1-800-LAWLINK. 1-800-529-5465.